Hello, this is Monica Kunzelguta, Resilience Coach and Mindset Mentor. I am on this platform, Yes to Success. And today, once again, we have Lori Mae Chenga, and she's going to share with us um, on how she uses hypnosis to work with people who've got dementia. So I don't know if I'm putting it correctly, but as someone who is in that profession, she's going to explain to us so that we, we know and understand a bit more how she uses her, her skills and her knowledge to help people who are dealing with dementia as well as families dealing with dementia. Hello, Laurie. Could you introduce yourself to uh, our audience, please? Hi Monica, it's great to be back with you again. Yes, I'm uh, Laurie Changer and I run a business, Echo of Success, here in Edmonton and I am a hypnotherapist and NLP practitioner and it's a wonderful tool and medium to be able to work with many people and I feel very blessed to have had training by Dr. Daniel Nightingale to assist people with Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's, and like you say, and the families, because what affects one person always affects the family as well. Mm, this is something that we don't normally think about. Um, so what sort of certification do you need to be able to do that? Well, I am a certified hypnotherapist, and then I took a specialization in addition to that, like I say, with Dr. Daniel Nightingale. So the wonderful thing with hypnotherapy is you can keep adding on to it um, and use different modalities in order to be able to work. But uh, Dr. Nightingale is a licensed psychotherapist and doctor is originally from England and they now have him and his wife are hypnotherapists and they have a beautiful healing retreat in um, the Arizona area. Currently he's in New York and they're planning a huge um, retreat to help individuals as well. Oh that's really that's that's useful information for people to have. So what exactly is hypnotherapy? Well hypnotherapy what exactly yes. Hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is um, the power of positive suggestion. So really it is simply about being in a relaxed state, free from all the clutter in our mind, and being so relaxed that then we can really find the subconscious um, changes that we need to be able to make to our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. So if you picture any um, drawer or closet in your house and it's full of junk, and you start pulling all of those items away, then after that you feel the sense of, ha. Ah. All right. Okay, so it's the same way with the mind. We're filling our mind up with thoughts and beliefs and stories that aren't even ours. So you could easily write down any negative thought, um, a feeling, it's, and then list at least five to ten people that told you that belief system. So it wasn't even yours in the first place. And then we just adopt that thinking. Right. So hypnotherapy helps clear that away so that you're just relaxed and free to be who it is you really are. Does that make sense? It's making sense. So does this mean that whatever has been taken out through hypnotherapy will not come back? Yes. Um, you also use NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, to help that because whatever you clear out, you have to put something good back in its place. Right. Right? Right. right. So NLP... Um, the neuro is the experiences that are gained from our mind. So there's five senses, and our experiences are gained from that in our mind. Okay? 
Linguistic is how we make sense of those experiences and we make sense of it through the language that we use. Mm -hmm. And then programming is we simply are very in tune and we can adjust our language to really predict excellence in our lives. Okay. So it's really listening to the pattern of your speech mm -hmm. and what we're creating from that. Right, right. So when you're saying listening to the power in our, in our speech, mm -hmm. whenever I hear the word hypnotherapy, I'm thinking of a couch and someone lying there and you're kind of deep, deep, going into a uh, deep sleep or whatever. So is it the same way, the same techniques that are used with the same one that you do yourself? Um, there are similar techniques to it, but that is often why people shy away from it because they don't realize that you don't need to be in a deep sleep. You are totally aware and um, a per willing participant throughout the session. You're just very relaxed from those thoughts. So it, it, in that way, you're just able to, um, it's a progressive relaxation technique, really. You can do deep hypnosis for things such as um, surgery. So you can take extra training in that. But really, um, hypnotherapists are just putting it, it, your mind into that relaxed state. Okay. So I guess it takes me to my next question where I'll, I always wonder, I think me included, um, I, I, I've never, and I don't think I... I, I, I'll find it comfortable to just volunteer to, you know, for, for hypnosis. Right. Why, why do you think people are uncomfortable with hypnosis? Or most people, why do you think most people or some people are uncomfortable with hip, hypnosis or hypnotherapy? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, because people have a false sense of what it is through television and stage hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, it is not making you do ridiculous things. And people also feel that we have control, total control of your mind. Right. Um, but, but that is not true. Um, you will never do anything that your mind doesn't feel safe to do. That is why with stage hypnosis, often people will say, well, I can't be hypnotized. I was on stage and they couldn't do it. It wasn't that they couldn't do it. It was that you didn't want, there was a part of yourself that didn't want to be ridiculed in that way. And so... So they're there to make money to have you do silly things. But some people just at a deeper sense say, no, that's not who I really am. Right. And they're sent back to their seat. Okay. So I know I have seen somewhere where somebody says something and everybody just go and everybody just goes to sleep. And yes. they go and everybody wakes up. So is, is there anyone or would there be anyone in the crowd who would be able to resist that the go to sleep conversation and then the snapping to wake them up? Yes, there are people who would resist that depending on how it was set up. If they knew that they were coming to, um, you know, do all of the funny things that are done on stage, they would resist that. Right. Um, that that is not what we do when we're working with individuals with um, Alzheimer's or dementia. It is just a progressive relaxation technique. Stage right. hypnosis is a totally different modality. We're not snapping your fingers and causing you to just tune out. Right. We want you to be fully aware and to be a participant in your own life so that you have the tools and the means to change so that you don't need us. Okay. That's, that's, um, I think that will help a lot of people to kind of understand and maybe uh, at least have an open mind when they hear the word hypnotherapy and then what it can be used for. So if you could just list maybe a couple of things that hypnotherapy can be used for 
what are they or what would they be? Okay, well, um, recently I've used it to help um, people in theater be able to have a really good addition to remove those blocks in their mind that are preventing them to audition for a, a part in a play. Okay, so that's a technique that it can be used for um, weight loss, for um, to stop smoking, um, just to further yourself um, into different avenues of your life that you want to get get into so it's really about breaking through limiting beliefs All right All so right. stress if you want to handle stress if you want to handle pain if you want to know where fear comes from and we change that we pattern your thinking um, with again with going back to people with Alzheimer's and dementia because it's a progressive relaxation technique Mm -hmm. Then they have calmness, they have confidence, and they're relaxed. So now they can do better in the daily living skills. Right. They'll want to socialize. They'll want to go to the dining room, for example. Um, so it's really so many facets that you can use it for. Mm. Okay. That's, that, that, that helps, and I think it also helps our audience to even research a bit more and see if they could find a solution for whatever challenges they may be having. And um, I think by listing the things that it, it, uh, it helps with, you have already listed the benefits, but um, you mentioned, I think we've talked about um, how you, you help the children. Yes. So you you hear you you how how do you link? Because now you have the children, the um, the family, and then the person with dementia, and then there is the hypnotherapy. So do you have a program that helps that the whole family that helps? everyone and if so the hypnotherapy is only used on the person with dementia or on the whole family i could use it on the whole family it's not just um, person specific um because we all have um our fears around our loved one that has the diagnosis so we can i can assist everybody just allowing that person with the diagnosis their peace to move on and to move forward in life it's not going to take the condition away it's right. going to help everybody be able to communicate through the changing brain is what i call it okay mm -hmm. so we're living with that changing brain when the brain changes our whole dynamics within the family shift and change okay. and i help the whole family use a new pattern of belief system to help heal. Right. right. So with, with hypnotherapy, hypnotherapists are all trained in the same way, but they all use an enhancing modality that's similar to it, so you're really getting a lot of tools. Right. So I myself also have a certificate in Ho'oponopono, which is a Hawaiian technique for forgiveness, right. which really is very beneficial for families to be able to forgive themselves because when our loved one is in a state of dementia or Alzheimer's, we start um, feeling bad about maybe we were mean to them or we weren't a good child or we wish that we could have had more time or said or done things differently. So this is part of that healing process that happens. Okay. I think um, you have shared quite a lot on, on the topic and I have actually helped me understand because I know you do all these, all these, you work with people with dementia, hypnotherapy, you are a, a, a tutor, trainer, teacher, and you also an author for children's books like 
there is no ending to what what you can what you can do. So um, um, we're coming to the close of our our discussion. So if anybody wants to find you, like for example, how long are these sessions? Uh, how long I like if you're working with someone, for example, how long do you work with them for for them to be at a place where they are now saying, uh, this is is it just a one session and everything will be done, or you might need to see them a few times? How long do you work with them for? It really is um, person specific, Monica. Generally, the session is uh, an hour and a half. With somebody with um, dementia or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, it's a 45 to 60 minute session. Right. A lot can be shifted in just that one session. And the great thing about it is that you're given the gifts to continue using it. So I, with that hour and a half session and my fee, you get a follow-up session that's free, no charge. And then sometimes, you know, people are fine for a period of months and then they say, hey, I'm moving forward and I noticed this. Can you help me with that? So then you become like this onion and we start yeah, feeling it really away. Feeling away. And, okay. Yeah. And just, just briefly, I just wanted to say that going through the hypnotherapy in my training mm -hmm. unleashed me being able to write the book. On bright and be part of your um, story of resilience and it helped me to be doing all these different things so I unlocked my own um, beliefs limiting beliefs oh that's very nice to hear it, it is encouraging too so I'm hoping that other people who are listening will be um, able to find their own strength in looking for solutions for uh, any of the challenges that they're facing. So if somebody wants to find you. I'm at Lori May Hypnotherapy at gmail.com. That's your email, right? Yes. Okay. Or you can phone me at 780-218-7831. Okay. Can you repeat that for them to get it? Yes, 780-218-7831. Do you work with people online or it has to be face-to-face? Uh, -face? No, I also do Skype calls and I have an office in Edmonton that I work out of. Okay, that's great. It's been really nice having you here on this platform. Yes to success. And this is me, Monica Kunzeke Guta resilience coach and mastermind mentor we will be back again soon and please uh, join our group uh, yes to success and get the support as well as um, information and knowledge which will help you to move forward i will see you in the next um, in the next video thank you Lori. thank you monica